Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Morgan James book launch. My name is Jim Howard. I'm the publisher for Morgan James Publishing. And today we've got two amazing authors to introduce you to. Two authors, same book. Uh, we have Josh McAfee and Trisha Hart. And they're the authors of Measure Up, Managing Your Career, Managing Your Career Transition Like a Boss. Josh, Trisha, thank you guys so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Thanks for having us. Man, I, I am really excited about this book because, you know, I think when you, when you see this title and subtitle, it fits so well for anybody who's in a, in a career transition, a change, or uh, maybe starting out even into that that new career but even right now right coming off the back of COVID things are starting to open up we're starting to see a lot of changes now not that we didn't over the last year and a half but now we're really starting to see what that looks like in a corporate world so I think the timing for this book uh, couldn't be better for this conversation to happen but what would you guys say or who would you guys say you know should read this book and and why is it so valuable so, um, so the book is specifically written for people who want to be intentional about their careers and uh, be it that they're trying to grow internally with a company or be it that they're, you know, in or, 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 or considering or should be in career transition, the book's geared to help them get the most out of that. So, you know, you know, first and foremost, getting your head straight so you're in the game. Um, second, understanding the process and, and, and then defining yourself as a product so you're always positioning yourself from your strongest uh, points, which is where you're valuable versus your weakest points. I'm looking for a job or I want, I think I feel I need a promotion or whatever. Um, what we find is that when people position themselves from their value versus what they want, think, feel, or need, they net the results and actually get what they, what they want. Yeah. And to piggyback on what Josh said, you know, who should read this book? It, it was really one of my favorite Amazon reviews was a woman who said, you know, I'm, I'm in career transition. I'm looking for something new. I sat down at my desk to read the book and to write out, you know, all the things and the exercises that the book prompted. And I found myself sitting on the couch with a blanket, cozied up and reading it more like a self-help book and really being introspective about who I was, how I wanted to present myself, you know, what were some of my hangups? And, and it really was this incredible mental shift between who I am as a, you know, a human being and who I want to be as a, you know, a work and business person and how they really interact and intertwine. And I'd never really thought about, you know, presenting myself that way. And it was, it was a really awesome experience. So. Yeah, that, that is so incredible. And, and I love the fact that, you know, people can get that out of this book that, that maybe they're just looking at the whole process the wrong way. And we, I think we've all been taught you know, to look at it in a certain way when we're talking about moving up through a career. So to be able to open up that, those new ideas and let people look at themselves first and see, how do I present that to get to the point where I want to be or where I'm going to be comfortable or where I see where I can be plugged in the most. And that, that's your book, okay. um, knocked that out of the park. It started to come. No, nobody teaches it anymore. I mean, right. there's no, no place where you can really go to, to get advice around career growth. And, um, and, you know, for, for me, after interviewing thousands and thousands and thousands of people that are considering or want to do career transition, you know, we find out, you know, 30, 40 percent of them really should just go ask their boss for a raise or a promotion. And, you know, shockingly, when they ask, they get it, Yeah. you know, if they present it well. Yeah. So what do you guys think are some of the biggest mistakes that people make mm -hmm. when they're, you know, trying to grow their career? You know, I'll take this one first. I... I think that one of the biggest mistakes that people make is that they do the same thing over and over again, right? They create their resume, they get on, you know, they have their cover letters and they put them up on the job boards and they just keep clicking and they click and they click and then they bang their heads against the wall because they're getting the same results, which are none, right? Because they're competing against hundreds of thousands of other people for the same position. Mm. And that's really not the way the West is won. They really need to step outside, do the work, do the networking, get out there. And, you know, it's very high anxiety producing a lot of times for people to network. And there are a myriad of ways to do it. And we talk about it in the book. 
and we give really specific concrete actions for people to do and to build their network really effectively um, without that anxiety. And so the confidence grows. And so I really genuinely think that, you know, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is one of the biggest mistakes that people make. Mm. Yeah. And I can't agree more. What we find is that people tend to focus on the things that are easy or lower hanging fruit. Right. But that typically doesn't net the response and the and the uh, um, and the results that they want. But doing some of the things that are a little higher effective just takes a little more effort on the front end. But what it nets on the on the tail end is is pretty darn significant. And um, you know, one of the things that we see people do consistently is instead of spending the time defining themselves as a product, building out their messaging, identifying what their target audience is, who the people that would find them valuable, the companies that would find them valuable. They just run out there and say to everybody in their network, I need a job, you know, <laughs> and when they do that, you know, it, it's first off, it puts people back on their heels, but they're, but they're scared. I mean, and tip, people in, in fear typically react one of three ways, either they fight, they flee or they freeze. And, um, and our goal is to help them to understand they're going to have those reactions, but to have, you know, know when it happens, have their actions uh, um, and what they're going to do in those situations defined. Mm -hmm. But if you invest the time up front and defining yourself as a product, building out your messaging, identifying your target audience, and then having really compelling messaging for them, you know, it's a little bit more work up front. Um, it may delay you two, three, four, five days to, to do the process. But at that point, instead of, you know, instead of contacting, you know, five, 10 people a week, you're contacting hundreds of people a week and it's very targeted. It's very defined. Mm -hmm. And you net a significantly better result way faster. I love that idea of looking at yourself as a product and being able to define that for that target market so that you can actually get the result that you're looking for. And, you know, yeah, you're right. Doing the easy step is, is easy, but it does get you that low hanging fruit, which is usually the lowest hanging, easiest to get position as opposed yeah. to taking that extra step and, and moving up to the point of your, your value mm -hmm. is. Trisha and I have worked with people, you know, in outplacement projects for companies when they're being displaced and the companies hire us to, to help them. And we've had people that, you know, just don't, don't even know where to start. And, um, and we give them this process and it just helps them breathe easier through it. They, they know the metrics that they should be trying to hit. And when they hit them, they get the results. You know, we've seen people that have spent six months or a year trying to find a, find a job. You know, and we walk them through this process and, you know, within six to 12 weeks, you know, they, they, they don't have, bad news is they don't have an offer. The good news is they typically have four to five. Right. It makes all the difference. It really does. Again, yeah, if, doing the same if, thing over and over and expecting a different result is, that, um, does not work. You know, versus if you can contact and have outreach to a thousand people that are in your, in your target zone and do that in a, you know, in a six week period with multiple stages of messaging to them, you know, and some stupid, simple ways to connect and for them to connect with you, not on I'm looking for a job, but this is why I'm valuable. Let's have a conversation. Mm. You end up with a lot more activity, a lot more interest. And you, more importantly, you're not in competition with 20 other people for the same job that's posted. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. So what, what's the biggest piece of advice you could give people right now, you know, to, uh, to get where they want to be and, and maybe they're facing those career changes as they're watching this. So it, it depends on if they're actively in career transition, um, they're considering a, a career move, be it internally or externally or should be. So what we find is that most people do um, have career transitions and have growth in their career out of a fear point or out of something that's happened to them. Our premise would be that they should be more intentional about it mm -hmm. so that they're in control of things and in front of it. If you're bored in your job, if you're underutilized, if you are underpaid, you know, and you know it, or you're in a spot where you just want to do something different, you know, first and foremost, talk to your, talk to your managers about it, talk to your boss about it, figure out, you know, Hey, and approach them with the, here's why I'm valuable. Here's what I'm doing. Here's the areas I think I can add value in. Let's chart a path to go there. Basically be intentional about your own career. You know, um, I like to call it um, promotion, you know, uh, employee driven promotions. You know, if you do that first and foremost, you're going to identify whether you're going to have a career and the growth opportunity there or not, or if you should be looking, mm. you know, if it's internal, push that, grow everything to where you possibly can until you can't anymore. If it's that you've got to look externally, then, you know, 
it's time to start doing the things and, and defining a process and you're defining yourself as a product and then pushing through, you know, all the stuff you should be doing so that you can get a job while you frankly still got a job. It's a lot uh, less stressful to do it that way. And you can take your time a little bit more in that play in that situation. Trish. Yeah. You know, to piggyback on that, I think my biggest piece of advice is um, do the work. Mm -hmm. You know, we all want to take the easy way out because it's the easy way out and our lives are busy and they're stressful. But when you put in the time to do the work and to figure out who you are and how you wanna present yourself, and then you actually go and you do that. And I know that one of the things that holds people back all the time is lack of confidence and anxiety over reaching out to people that they don't know or asking for favors. And what we really recommend in this book is just a really soft pedal way to get to know new people and to spread your network in a very non-threatening way. So that when, even if you're talking to somebody who, you know, you reach out to and they don't necessarily have a job, they might know somebody else who has a job that would fit your skill set and your value. And they, you might also engage in a conversation with somebody you don't know who suddenly brings something up and you think, oh, wow, I, I really hadn't even thought about that type of position for myself. So really getting past that anxiety and building the confidence in who you are and the value that you offer to any organization, I think is really where the hard work is, where, where it lies. And so my biggest, you know, that's what I would say is yeah. work to get over those confidence issues, do the work, figure out who you are and what your value is and make sure that everybody knows it so that when the time comes and in the perfect position is available, that somebody goes, oh, I have the perfect person for you to fill that position. And you don't even have to do any work. You don't have to submit a resume because you get a referral. Yeah. And don't feel like you have to, I agree with everything Trish said and, and, and never feel like you need to do it alone. Right. You know, find peers that may be in, tr in transition or may not be, just people that you respect. You know, not the ones that are going to tell you the, the the nice things, but the ones that are going to say, hey, your LinkedIn profile looks like crap. You need to smile on that picture. You know, right. um, if it's a friend that'll say you got a booger in your nose, that's the person you want. Um, and then look for a couple of mentors, you know, people that are a step up or where you want to go in your career and um, and ask them for their advice and ask if they they'd help you walk through that transition. You'll find that people love helping you. That's right. That's what I was just going to say. Some one thing that I have learned over the years is people want to help. They really do. You know, we're afraid to ask for help because we don't want to burden people, but people genuinely want to help. So figure out the exact help you want so you don't waste somebody's time, but yeah. then ask. It's okay. People really do want to be there. And and that help isn't, hey, I need a job. Right. That help is, hey, Here's what I do. Here's why I'm valuable to an organization and to a company or to a leader. Who do you know out there that would need someone like me? Who do you know where I can add value to their organization? You know, that way you're positioned from your strongest point, not your weakest point. Um, you know, who has goals aligned with this? Who has pain points? Who's frustrated with this? You know, that puts you in a, in a position where somebody referring you says, hey, I know you struggle with this. This person's amazing. Just like Trish said, that those referrals are gold. And you walk in position from your strongest point of value versus your weakest point, which is I'm looking for a job. Right. Yeah. You know, I often tell people that um, like uh, anytime you can get that endorsement from someone else, whether it's about a product or if it's about yourself, you can say you're great all day long. People may or may not believe it, but when someone that they trust says you're great, you're great. So that makes perfect right. sense. My grandpa, he had a thousand quotes and this was one of them that I'm sure he plagiarized from someone else, but he, he would say, you know, nobody ever believes the darn thing you say about yourself, but they'll always believe what other people say about you. Good or Amen. bad. Yeah. Amen. Absolutely. And I know you guys out there watching today, there, there are a handful of you, I can almost guarantee it because we're all in a different space now than we were just a year ago, year and a half ago. So there's, there's likely some of you who are in that position now where you're looking at your, your tomorrow and saying, what does that look like? You know, are you in that position where you're maybe looking to move up in the company you're currently in, or is it time for you to step out and find that new spot? This book is full. I mean, Josh and Trisha have given us um, tons of insight in just this last few minutes of conversation. Imagine 
what they've packed away inside Measure Up. So the book's available everywhere books are sold uh, in, in multiple formats. So you can get the style that you want to read. But I encourage all of you to, to grab a copy of this book, go through it and start applying what's inside because it's going to make a huge difference in the way that you face your career moving forward. No matter what that career is, there's options for everyone. And you guys have spelled it out so well. Uh, and I know that there are people out here now listening to us who uh, are wanting to find out more if they, you know, maybe have ordered the book already or, or are about to and should. Um, but maybe they want to connect with you guys and find out more about what you're doing. What's the best way for someone to get connected with you guys? Yeah, so um, you can go to careerwhisperer.co. Um, um, and I'm real easy to find on uh, on, fa on Facebook uh, um, or, or, or a, a measure up book is on Facebook. Um, you know, I think it's hashtag measure up book. The uh, um, we're at measure up book. And, uh, and then of course, uh, uh, LinkedIn for both of us. Um, I'm super easy to find if you just, uh, search on Josh McAfee and, uh, Trish. Same for me, but, you know, just search on Trisha Harp and you'll see my trishaharp.com website, as well as my LinkedIn profile and my Facebook profile and my Insta and my every single thing is out there. So and, and I, I think her LinkedIn profile is actually Trisha Garrett. Heart. Oh, that's right. It is. That's right. Yeah. I've got my maiden name in the middle there. Yeah. So you can look right down below and I'll have it right there for you. Yep, yep. And, <laughs> um, and, and we also just wanted to say thank you. The, the, we've been a little overwhelmed with uh, how well the book's been received. We, uh, we, 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 we were hoping it'd help a lot of people, but we sure as heck weren't expecting to, to have it end up, uh, you know, is yeah. number two on Wall Street Journal bestseller and, and uh, you know, hitting the USA Today bestsellers uh, list either, as well as on Amazon, number one for, for weeks. So we just wanted to say thank you to everybody who's, who's bought the book, all the encouragement that we've gotten and all the feedback that we've gotten has been absolutely amazing. So, so thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. And, you know, it just goes to show how, how many people are struggling. And so we're, we're honored to be able to help all those individuals out there who really need it right now. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. Thank you guys, because, you know, a lot of times that's where authors get into situations a lot of times where they're wanting to give the information that they have because they know it's going to be beneficial. But when you share insight and information the way you have that makes an instant impact, that's so powerful. And I appreciate you guys for taking the time to come together and put your thoughts in place and, and make it make sense for where we are yeah. today and, and give those an opportunity to figure out what that new path should look like and be able to move forward. And, Absolutely. Uh, and we just, we just encourage everyone, like the title says, measure up, measure up to what you're capable of, measure up to what God made you to be. You can mm -hmm. do it. You know, just, uh, just in the immortal words of my favorite uh, philosopher, Dory, just keep swimming, just keep <laughs> swimming, just keep swimming. That's exactly right. That is so awesome. So guys, thank you for uh, taking the time to talk with us today and, uh, and share you. the book. And you. and you guys out there watching, really, um, if you got anything out of this conversation, which I know there's no way you could be watching this and not have gotten a nugget that you can utilize, just imagine what can happen when you read Measure Up. So go get the copy of the book now, and we hope to see you on our next one. Josh, Trisha, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Take care, everyone.